fiancé. On va voir quoi être So I've included in your handout, so there's a lot of handouts today because I wanted to give you guys some information on where we're at as a school and how our, we're moving on key performance indicators in terms of uh, performance data for assignments and just some information about our, our school. I don't know if you guys are familiar. So the first thing I'll go over is the is this one right here, this lengthy document. So this one comes out every five weeks. And so it breaks down our data. So this is for CAWP because our CAWP, uh, if we're making progress on curriculum and instruction, inclusive and supportive learning, connectedness and well-being, it'll be reflected in our outcome data for FOT, SOT, grades, passing, behavior, and so forth. So the network uh, creates, every school gets one of these every five weeks. It's called the by week data marking period. So right there, you'll get a snapshot of the school in terms of how we're doing with grading trends and how we compare from 2022 all the way to 2025. I don't know if you've ever seen this report. I know that our staff has, um, or if it's ever been shared with LSC members, but yeah, so every five weeks this comes out. So the grading trends, and then it goes down into attendance. So you can see our breakdown for, for 50% uh, percent of our students are between 90, 95, sorry, 95%, 36% of our students are 95% of attendance, 50% are between 90 and 95, and about 50 are below 90, 90% or below. So it breaks it down, then it talks about the attendance uh, trend. So right now we're at 84% attendance overall as a school. We're trending with uh, oh, last year. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should say the page number, page five. Page five. Because I know we have a bylaw, so I will try not to and then date you guys with all of this, but just to give you guys an idea. On page five, you'll see attendance trends. So as a school, we're at 84%, so we're trending uh, as same as last year for week five. Then you'll see the breakdown by gender, by race, by race and gender, by EL and DL, and by SCLS. So you can see that with the addition of an SCLS coordinator, we continue to see an increase in attendance of our SCLS students. And then what you can see in the middle is a table and they break down the attendance by grade level. So you can see how ninth grade has um, has weathered over four years, 10th grade, 11th and 12th. So right now, freshmen are trending 2% higher, sophomores 2% higher, 11th grade is still the same as last year and 12th grade is down by 5%. Page six gives you um, our FOT this year. So I don't know if you're familiar with the continuous improvement data transparency policy. So that's our new um, way of how they're gonna measure schools and look at data. And it's all about data transparency. And they changed the FOT metric to look at uh, courses and grades in courses. So this is the first five week data with the new FOT rate. So you can see right there how they're breaking it up. So on track, on watch and off track. So on watch and on track means they're passing with a D or better. Mm -hmm. um, and off track would be the students that have, that are missing like the necessary like grades in terms of to be on track for freshmen. So you can see right now that 14% of our freshmen are off track. And it explains the new definition of this new metric. So they're just rolling this out right now in terms of the shift to this new metric for FOT. And then uh, in my uh, principal's uh, presentation, uh, you can see the comparisons of how we're doing across our network, which I'll share later. And then it goes into the breakdown by female, male, race, race and gender, ELDL and SDLS. And then it goes into passing rates of freshmen. So you can see the passing rate by course, so English, math, holistic science and social science. So you get to see on page eight, you'll get to see the breakdown of passing rates by course. For ninth grade, and then it breaks it down by attendance, by ELDL status, and by race and gender, and that's page eight. Then you get the same information for 10th grade. 
And so as you can see, our pass rates are trending higher for week five. Then you get the same information for 11th grade. Mm -hmm. Then you get the same information for 12th grade on page 11. And then it gives us a report of misconducts four to six and it breaks it down by comparison of last year to this year and the restorative practices used last year and this year. It gives a suggested protocol on page 12 on what we should do with this data with the culture and climate team and how we engage our grade level teams with this data as well. And then it breaks it down by OSS by student group, meaning equity groups. And then you can see the top five misconducts leading to OSS and ISS, if there were police notifications and unique student totals. So that's page 12. And then you get page 13, it goes into specifics by each course. So then you get the same summary, but now by English. So you'll get to see how English is doing for all grades, gender and race, ELDL and student counts. So you can see that we're trending higher in pass rates for English this year compared to last year. But remember, we're comparing apples to oranges. They're different cohort students. And then you'll see math, where we're at with math, we're trending higher in math as well for all grades. In terms of, that's page 14, sorry. And then um, non-core, which is holistic, you can see that uh, we're trending a, a little bit higher there too as well. And then science on page 16, and then you get social science on page 17. Then you get PE on page 18. And then you can see fine arts on page 19. And that can, that's, so we get this every five weeks. And so right. you ask, what do you do with this? So this is part of when, uh, so when I said with my deputy, part of my LDP is a, a reflection on this data and what are the action steps that have taken to make the progress and what are the action steps to continue to improve. So that's the CI and the CIDT continuous improvement. Um, we engage uh, our success team and our grade level teams around this data, and we think about the right way to socialize this data because it can be overwhelming. So that it be, so it translates into tier one practices in the classroom, and it informs the work of culture and climate. Like, what are you doing? And then, it, like, what are the departments doing? Like, how are we continuing to move progress forward? So that's part of like, so the CIWP. This is how they progress monitor. This is just one of the elements okay. of progress monitor at CIWP. The second tool that's Used to progress monitor our CIWP is the rigor walk. So what you have here is a report of the rigor walk. So there are 13 indicators that um, whenever we visit classrooms. Now, when we visit classrooms, we look at items one through six of pillar one, which is standards-based learning. So we visit the classrooms and we look at six of those elements because that's what's our focus. But when the network comes in or anyone from the district comes in, they look at all 13 indicators. And then all of that is put into what they call the instructional empowerment system. And then they collect data and then they track how we do through visits. And that's how they and that's how they measure like rigor. Are we learning targets, standards based learning, the taxonomy level, which is the level of rigor of the task, the level of rigor of the learning target. Do they match is what you put on the board, what the students are doing. Does that match? Um, and how are we organizing students? Are we putting students in groups just to put them in groups or are, is there evidence that there wasn't some intentionality about how you group students and then that student to student discourse. Is it academic or is it just students talking about stuff? So they look at all of it. And so then you get a summary like this and it talks about uh, what classrooms and then they tra track the growth of all of the indicators. So you have access to this report. I asked their network data strategist to provide us the most current data that he could pull from the system they they put it and they analyze it for us so that's a nice thing so you have that that's how in terms of like curriculum and instruction and inclusive and supportive learning and i i don't know i know that we've been ib for a very long time mm -hmm. so a lot of our ciwp is grounded in what is ib and how do we make ib happen in this building mm -hmm. so what i did is i created just like a little pamphlet okay. for the lsc so that you're familiar with ib language our aims, so the learner profile is the first thing that we're aiming for our students to be. 
And then when you see the word ACLs, it's going to mean something. Those are approaches to learning. And I don't know if you knew there's approaches to teaching for IB. So learning styles and how we should be teaching as holistic teachers of a whole child. So you have that. And it talks about the leadership intelligences as, mm -hmm. so there's the domains for CPS, then there's the LSE evaluation, but there's also like the leadership domains for an IB head of school. So you can see there the domains of leadership for IB. So there's approaches to leadership too as well. And then as a school, this is the program and standards, and these are all the aims. Everything here is evaluated at year five. So when they do a thorough analysis, it's all of these indicators that we have to produce evidence that we're working towards every item on this page. So it's, it's a really he hefty document, but I just synthesized it for you guys so that you can have it. So at year five, so that's about two more years, we have to produce evidence for all of these, for purpose, environment, culture, learning, and all of the indicators with it. And everything has a number. So what we've been doing now, there's been some intentionality when we present as an ILT, culture and climate team, that we're aligning everything to the programs and standards. So we'll put like what it is, what number it is as well. So that when IB comes out, we can say here, this is how we've been aligning that work. Now there's some intentionality. It's not like saying it, now they can see it. So that's a big part of our CIWP is all of this work as well. So that, I just want to give you guys an update on <laughs> And I'll do this again at week 10 when the next PDF comes up. Any questions? And the teacher. I have a lot of questions after I go through it, but I don't know that I have questions. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you said like a five pillars? Yeah, those are the programs and standards. So I assume that this is the program the one, two, three, four. And There's a five. lot. Okay, God. It's like the project lines. Yeah, yeah like the lines. so our teachers are well versed in these documents because as soon as I get it, I also believe in data transparency, so they get the SLAT, they get the five-week data, they get anything the network sends us, it goes straight to them as well. And it's really to inform their tier one work um, as a department, as a classroom teacher, and all the teams as well, because every everything it takes everything to really inform like the classroom experience. So we got to conclude this part? Yeah, the CIWP part. Thank you. So I'm going to set up in the agenda, which is a principal report. Okay. All right. So updates. Our current enrollment is 1045. They, um, our 20th day number came in at is 101 students less. So they've already um, documented our number. So we're going to be short for next budget, 101 students. 101 next year's budget, right? Yes. So the 20th day number is 101 less of last year. So that means that we're going to expect to see many more uh, cuts in the budget. Yeah, yeah. that'll be determined at the, by the board, yes, yes at the one budget season. And then that's like $8,000 per student? Give or take. Not anymore. It'll depend. I don't know with the new contract. Remember, they changed the formula. The give or take, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be like give or take, including the teacher positions and like the central, centrally funded positions, it would calculate around that. All right, so current vacancies, we have a TAT SPED teacher, TAT security, TAT security, reading interventionist, art teacher, world language teacher, Spanish, and Spanish bilingual music teacher. Uh, just to explain how staffing works, uh, the transfer window, so right now it's a non-transfer window. So we had interest of candidates for these positions, the principal say no, and it's within their right to say no. So right now, we, even if we wanted to, if the principal says no, there's no transfer that's going to happen. The transfer window opens November 3rd. However, even if I staff, if I make an offer to you November 3rd, you will not start in this building until January 12th. 
So there's still going to be like it, it may appear like the the school is not actively staffing. It just means this transfer window is November 3rd. So even if I extended an offer, they can't enter this building until January 12th based on the transfer window for CPS. Um, so even if a candidate is interested, the first question I ask, have you, uh, is your principal going to approve a transfer? And then please talk to them because um, to have an interview and then you're going to still say no, your principal is going to say no. So I've gotten several no's in terms of their principal because it's understandable they won't be able to replace them as well. I know there's questions about like moves with ISBE. Uh, so keep in mind, we're still under ISBE review. There were uh, uh, anonymous uh, complaints made to ISBE regarding like staffing, staffing needs, minutes. And so there was another one put forth this year. So again, another anonymous complaint in terms of like the staffing needs. So whenever they're, we're under ISBE review, so you have to produce what you're gonna do. And so when you have teachers that are certified with an LBS1, you have to make adjustments here and there based on like, okay, how many sections can I go here without, uh, is this a, a area where I can afford not to have a teacher in front of it? Is this like PE and there's kids moving everywhere versus another section where they're at least somewhat stationary because they're in a the classroom. So, so some of those safety factors come into uh, play in there. And then thinking about like moving someone back into SPED that had an LBS1, so moving someone that was an interventionist into a core section because you have to prioritize the core instruction. So with all of the adjustments is why you don't see that many needs for, uh, we were three, we were short three SPED teachers. So now with all of the moves, we were able to minimize it to just the TAT um, SPED teacher, which is the federal state requirement. So we have to prioritize federal and state legislation, especially when we're under SB review. And then another complaint was made in terms of uh, like, where are the staff? So ISB is monitoring the school right now? Yeah, last year we had to produce action plans each quarter. And so that's why we have, I have to, um, part of the requirements to make sure that the staff attend, not training with me, they have to t uh, prioritize their training with the, the, it's no longer called ODLSS, it's called Office of Students with mm -hmm. Disabilities, so OSD. So making sure they're attending the OSD trainings, um, because of the ISB, so that means that OSD does come out. They were here this week to do uh, classroom visits to see what's going on with co-teaching models, the instructional setting. I'm going to get a report from that walk. And then based on that, I'll have to take um, whatever feedback they give me and what are my next steps as a school leader based on their evidence of what they saw in the classrooms. So they're, so they're gonna be making frequent visits to see what's going on in terms of like the teaching and the learning because I was able to produce already. Well, here's how I've been able to mitigate some of the challenges with staffing. So now it's the instructional piece. And so they'll come out unannounced and they do their visits. And then I continue to send everyone to PD and I have to produce that we're having all of this training and learning and that is translating into teaching and learning. Is, is be aware that there's like this mysterious person that's writing these letters and are they connecting the dot or they're just going through the investigation? Yeah, they just, they fulfill like, here's the complaint. Uh, can you, you explain it to me? You must follow what they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. I have to produce an action, like how am I making the necessary corrective action steps to make sure that our students' minutes are being met? Um, PD is very important, but it has to come from OSD. It can't be just like the case managers doing PD. That supports it, but making sure that they're going to OSD trainings whenever they have availability because they do get full because it's the entire district. Um, yeah. Thanks for um, explaining that. I have no clue. So that's where we're at with vacancies, but November 3rd, Cross Fingers will have. Um, candidates and then we'll start again the interview process but understand that no matter who i staff if they're within cps they won't start till january 12th if they're non-cps then they can start within like a month depending if they're within uh if they're out of the if they never applied to cps it takes anywhere 30 days to do the staffing process All right, so domain one organizational leadership we continue to meet every two weeks as an ilt so every week we've been focused on helping uh, on making sense of pillar one it is a lot to impact in terms of what does it mean 
And how do you teach others what does it mean, right? As an IOT, we're responsible for the learning of the adults in this building and how do we drive? So modeling what we wanna see in the classroom, knowledge utilization, which is one of the higher levels of rigor. Um, so our IOT is creating uh, videos, like tutorials of pillar one, and they've been allowed to be creative and think about how they're gonna teach others so that when we have new staff, we can show them the videos like this is what we mean by learning targets. This is what we mean by taxonomy levels. This is what we mean by um, uh, the, the indicator of six when there's math involved in terms of conceptual understanding and fluency, right? So we've been, it's, and then we're also giving feedback to one another. So we're modeling the practices that we want to see in the classroom. So in a way, we're using the IOT as a vehicle to create these playbooks. So it's a pillar one playbook, first time is by Steinmetz. So kind of reinventing how professional learning looks in terms of a creative way to re-engage the IOT and the staff around pillar one. And then next quarter, we are moving to pillar two. And then next year will be pillar three is one of the heavier lifts because it's assessment, both formative and summative and questioning. That one takes the whole year. Um, so right now at the network, we're unpacking pillar two. But keep in mind, we still get rated on all of the indicators, regardless of what we're working at the school level, right? And so that's just some context there. Um, our CAWP progress monitoring will be the week of 1025. Staff newsletter, some of our teams are IOT, CAWP, BHC, and MTSS is running really strong now. We have the team. We're looking at student referrals and we're strengthening our problem solving process, um, our data processes for how we identify interventions. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see when you're behind the scenes to see how the MTSS and the BHT are like really growing in their leadership. And, and just like hearing like how the counselor was sharing, like um, she just recently came from another school. And I know I could be overwhelming sometimes with like the expectations and the learning. And it's like, oh my God, Dr. V. Um, that's why they say rigor, Dr. V. <laughs> um, but she was, she came into my office to share like she had a power session regarding all of the systems. And she said, I'm gonna call my old boss. And she's like, if you thought I was a good counselor, she's like, I'm a phenomenal counselor now. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice to hear that, um, that she was gonna share that with, because everything that I've been saying, she's, they went to a training, they're like, how did you know what was in the training? I was like, I just do. <laughs> so it, that was nice to hear, but from behind the scenes to see the BHT and how they care about the students and connecting them to the, right interventions is everything that we've been talking about in terms of making sure that those wraparound supports are there for our students. Uh, it's like a dream come true as a principal. So there you have uh, our network 14 week five data. I put that there so that you guys can see how we compare to all the schools. Uh, and within our network, so we are trending higher than some of our neighborhood schools in terms of our pass rate, our FOT rate, well, the new one at least. Um, so you can see here how they all of the network 14 schools. Instructional core, uh, we completed our rigor BOI landscape walk. So you have that report. Um, they're coming back again to do the full uh, full walk now. So that's been scheduled sometime in October, November. We're going to have the full. Um, quarter one, pillar one standards, our cycles of learning, our student voice. Right now we're making curriculum adjustments based on student voice. Uh, the week uh, admin do visit classrooms weekly and we complete the tool as well, but just for pillar one, just for six indicators. And then feedback is given. And then what I include is, is a snapshot of what the report looks like. So I, I included a snapshot of the email that we sent to departments that we visit and what the, the tool looks like when we end the dashboard, the CPS dashboard. And so you can see like here what the feedback looks like. And then I included our cycles of learning so that you can see how we're focusing on curriculum and instruction with content, cognitive demand, and uses of assessment. All right, and so May 3, culture and climate. Our a, a, ADA attendance is 0.33% higher than the same time last year, even with Flex Day Fridays. 443 restorative conversations, 58 detentions, 26 OSS, 21 ISS. SEL groups have started now. So MTSS and, uh, sorry, CCT and BHT are meeting with students and counselors as well. BAM, Journeys has started. MTSS and BHT, they're reviewing the referrals for tier two now. 
uh, MTSS MBHC have presented a staff PD. They're going to do one again tomorrow. Restorative practices, IoT learning has started to really uh, format the adult SEL piece. And what does adult SEL modeling look like for our students? You know, one of the biggest challenges is making sure that the adults understand that they have to model the behaviors that they want to see for the students. Mm -hmm. And so when we did our self-assessment, that came up the relational trust between staff to staff and how are we modeling those SEL behaviors. So we did the kickoff at the ILT with the understanding that there's going to be ongoing. I don't know if this is something that I may engage like new roots on or the person that supported us with uh, uh, the healing circles. It might be that I may have to reach out mm -hmm. just to continue that ongoing engagement with building relational trust uh, with a culture and client for adults and, and then the student to student relationships. So the CCT self-assessment has been completed. Relational trust is our first priority, student to student and staff to staff relationships and academic press. And then you can see here our culture and climate data. We're trending uh, now lower than last year. And like uh, we explained uh, or last time we met, that was the, the five, but now we've seen a decline. So that was the one off and now we're trending lower than last year. Domain four talent, uh, continue, our last Network 14 principal in AP meeting was October 3rd. I attend monthly network meetings with our network. Um, we have the CPS New Teacher Mentor Program being led by Ms. J. Steinman's Connection and Action Adult SCL still ongoing. Uh, weekly meetings with our CEO and CEDO, teacher trainees this month, Skyline Summits and STEAM Coordinator meeting, IOT meetings, STEAM and IB PLCs are ongoing. Um, our BOY principal and AP evaluation for the district is now started, it's in progress. I'll have my meeting soon. It's a more comprehensive document. It's where I have to like link and all of this data goes into it and it has to be a smarty goal. So it's not, it's like a book. Uh, reach window is open, transfer window I already explained. And then you can say happy custodians day. So we took a picture of them. Um, and then you can see some of the adult PL activities in terms of still promoting connect, uh, connectedness and well-being across staff. And that concludes my principal presentation. Now is budget transfers and internal accounts. <laughs>